In this video, we'll be going over how to visualize and understand the meaning of O log n when diagnosing time complexity. Please be sure to stick around until the end of the video for a surprise trick on how to quickly diagnose the time complexity of a function. And without any further delay, let's get started. To understand what is meant when we say that an algorithm has a complexity of O log n, we must first understand what a logarithm is. Simply put, a logarithm is the power that a number needs to be raised to to get some other number. I know, that doesn't make much sense out of context, but don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's take the number 8 into consideration. So we want to raise some number to some power to get 8. In computer science, unless specified otherwise, we can always assume that the number that we want to raise to some power is 2. So let's rewrite this. So we want to raise 2 to some power to get 8. So this same equation can be written like this, where this 2 here is called the base. And let's not forget that in computer science, the base is always 2. So to find the answer to this, we just need to find the answer to this. With that in mind, we can see that if we raise 2 to the power of 3, we get the number that we are looking for, 8. So log base 2 of 8 is 3. So with all of that in mind, let's move on to the meaning of O log n. For this portion, we will be using a very bare bones recursive function to visualize O log n, but don't worry, I will walk you through every step. Just stay with me. So we will start with a number n. We will use 8 so that you can easily see how this relates to our explanation of logarithms in the previous slide. So this variable n, we will be passing to our recursive function that looks like this. So this function's time complexity is O log n. Let's dig deeper to find out why. For now, let's just ignore this first line and focus on what the function is actually doing. So when we pass a number n to this function, it divides n by 2 or splits it in half and then calls itself with the new halved or divided number. Let's visualize this using a graph. So we first call the function with the value 8. This 8 is then divided by 2. The function then takes the result of the division and passes it recursively to itself as the new value for n, which in turn results in us going one level deeper. We then do the same thing with our new value for n, which is 4. That 4 is divided by 2, resulting in a new n, and the function then passes our new value for n to a recursive call to itself again, resulting in us going one more level deeper. We then do the same thing with our most recent value for n, which is 2. We divide it by 2, and the function once again recursively calls itself. At this level, we will stop as we can no longer divide n without getting fractions as the result. Now we have arrived at the beginning of the secret to understanding O log n, so watch closely. If you look at our graph, you will see that we've gone 1, 2, 3 levels deep. If you recall from our previous slide, the log base 2 of 8 is 3. Our input n is 8, and we've gone 3 levels deep. You will also notice that we had to raise 2 to the power of 3, or multiply 2 times 2 times 2 to get 8. And since division is just the inverse of multiplication, we can see that when we do something like this. So that means that this function has a time complexity of O log n. Why? because our n is 8, and in computer science, our base is always 2. And we must have our n 3 times, or go 3 levels deep in our recursive function to get to a point where we can no longer reasonably have our input n. Which is another way of saying that log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the secret to understanding O log n time complexity. And as a quick note, this is not only applicable to recursive functions. If you're interested in me creating a video explaining O log n for non-recursive functions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you're curious about that line of code that we covered up earlier, 
all it does is make sure we stop dividing in when n becomes 1, or otherwise the function would keep dividing fraction after fraction until we eventually exceed the maximum call stack.